what's up guys uh, today we're going to be taking a look at getting started with painting these guitars I got three different bodies here in the previous couple videos we took a look at how to disassemble this one specifically so if you're doing a paint job on your electric guitar and you don't know how to take it apart you might want to check those out so at this point if you're lucky you've got your guitar looking kind of like this you can see there's no shiny spots at the end of the previous video I showed you kind of the reflection off of it it's all sanded down at 600 grit and I didn't go through the clear coat into the paint at all so I won't need to do primer on this one but to get into a couple different examples here I've got this guitar had a couple of minor issues with the paint so I had to sand them out so I'm right down into the wood in a couple of places on this one. I'm going to have to use primer on it. Uh, just to clarify for this, I'm just going to be using a 1K primer from a can. There are lots of different kinds, well, there are a few different kinds of primers. You've got 1K and 2K, uh, mostly the urethane primers or the enamel primers are the good ones to use for this kind of thing. Uh, you can also get, obviously, the catalyzed stuff that comes out of the gun. If you're wondering about what type of paint to use for that sort of thing, check out my video on paint choices for painting guitars. In fact, it's probably a good idea to take a look at that anyway so that you can choose. Uh, some people prefer lacquers for specific reasons. Some people prefer urethanes, uh, polyurethane finishes, that kind of stuff. And some people like using water-based paints with urethane over top or if you're just going to use spray paint I'm, I'm just going to use rattle cans on this this is my uh, testing guitar body you can probably tell it's kind of screwed up but that's the whole idea of having one of these I'm going to show you how to do a rattle can finish on this if you've got a really expensive guitar you don't want to be doing a rattle can finish and I will explain that in the paint choosing video so take a look at that Anyway, uh, now that this has been sanded down, it's ready to get a sealer coat on it, particularly because I'm using auto wear paint for the majority of this, or Cretex, basically the waterborne acrylics. So I'm going to use a sealer on that. Uh, first off though, I'm going to do the primer on this one. So now that they're disassembled and sanded, we need to make sure that we don't have any wax or grease on them just from like touching them with our fingers stuff like that so the first thing that we're going to do is use wax and grease remover on them I've got some of that right here uh, there are a lot of different kinds this is duplicolor wax and grease remover just use a cloth and uh, wipe these down so uh, tip for this it's got uh, I'm not sure if they're all like this, but this one's got a piece of uh, foil basically in the top that you're supposed to cut through. If you just poke two holes in it, you can still get some material out when you tilt it, but you don't really run the risk of dust and stuff from your rag going back into the can. So it's a good way to avoid contaminating your product. Alright guys, now that uh, we've got all that wax and grease remover dried up on this it's time to put some primer on it now for this one like I said there are lots of different types of primer uh, 2k 1k all of that stuff this body is in good condition there's really uh, nothing that needs filling in no nicks or anything left I've already dealt with all of those so I'm just going to use a simple 1k primer typically you would put primer on fairly heavy and then sand it that's kind of the idea, you get to build it up and it fills stuff in and all that. Uh, but I'm only really using it for the purposes of sealing up this wood. So I'm going to put it on pretty light because I don't want to uh, I don't want to have that much work to do after. So just a light coat of that. It is not water based so I'm going to be wearing a mask. I, because I'm doing this just out of a rattle can it's going to be the technique for it is just going to be short 
strokes. Make sure you don't keep the paint on when you stop, all right? You don't want to have any paint coming out unless the can's moving. And I'm going to move the, the can pretty quickly because I don't want a lot of buildup on here. I just want a light coat. All right, no, no circular motions or anything like that, all right? We're not, uh, we're not graffitiing a wall. So try and keep it smooth motions, nice and light for this. If you've got a situation like this, if you need it filled in, if you've got nicks that need to be filled in, I suggest just doing them with filler and then following this technique. But if not, you can get a two-part primer and lay it on heavy and then sand it down after, okay? So I'm gonna put on my mask and get started. One other thing that I should mention before I do this, you don't want any dust getting in your paint job, even if it is the primer. So get a tack rag, okay? It's just a sticky cloth. You can buy them at Totem or Home Depot or uh, any paint, paint shop that does automotive paint if you've got one of those nearby. And go ahead and give this thing an a nice solid wipe down. Make sure you get any dust and stuff off of there because you don't want that getting into your paint job. Okay? Try and avoid touching it at this point with your fingers because we have already applied the wax and grease remover. So I'm not saying you guys are greasy, but try to avoid that if you can. I've already tacked this off and everything. This is ready to spray. So I'm gonna grab my base coat sealer or whatever it is, my sealer dark from AutoWare. I'm gonna be spraying it at about 30 PSI. And with water-based paint, we're gonna do light coats. I'm just gonna do three nice light coats. And then if we need to sand that down at all, we can. And then we can start applying our base color. So. Let's get started. So now I've got my three coats of, or actually I ended up putting on four light coats of dark sealer on this guitar. And it's been all tack ragged and everything. It's ready to go for my base color now. So there shouldn't be any dust on here. And as you can see, I got a nice smooth satiny black finish. So same concept for the base coat. I'm using a pearl blue, and because it's a pearl, I've taken the inline filter out of my gun. Uh, I'm still going to spray it nice and light and do several coats. Should take three or four coats to reach your sealing coat, which is when you have 100% coverage. You could, I could have also used a white sealer on this, but in a lot of cases, the pearls, particularly the Auto Air pearls, tend to cover better over the dark sealer. They lay out nicer and they go on a lot more even looking. So that's what I'm doing. Right, guys, here it is. There's our pearl blue, sorry. I don't know if you can really see the sparkle in the camera, probably not. It this stuff uh, to really show up properly you need clear coat on it so I'm gonna do some <clears throat> airbrushing and, and a few other things on this guitar so it'll be a while before I get to the clear coating stage but this is a pretty awesome color so I'm sure it will all turn out fairly well thanks for watching and we'll see you next time